We have the first open source uncensored DeepSeek R1 version. This comes from Perplexity. They have released a uncensored version of DeepSeek R1 called R11776. Even though you might have seen other DeepSeek R1 uncensored version. This is probably the very first version that doesn't compromise on quality. And this is a very different technique from others what we have been seeing about uncensored version. So this one from Perplexity is called R11776 and the model is already available on Hugging Faces Model Hub. If you know the reference to 1776, let me know in the comment section right now. Otherwise, at the end of this video, I will let you know myself. First of all, this completely new model is huge. This is something that you can't run on local hardware. It's not a distilled model. It is the same original size R1, deep seek R1 model, but completely uncensored. Now, when somebody says uncensored, there is one thing that we need to clarify. There are a lot of different ways people have started approaching the uncensored problem. And one of the most popular ways in recent times, people have been doing uncensoring is to use something called obliteration. But this model is not using the technique. So obliteration is a technique that looks for activation where the model would activate, get activated, uh, specifically in the residual streams and understand how you can deactivate it or how you can, um, you know, stop it or pause it in such a way that the model would not uh, say, I will not answer these questions. So this is a very different kind of a technique and I've seen multiple times that this technique especially might impact in the performance of the model. But what Perplexity managed to build is they have managed to build something that doesn't compromise on the quality of the model. And for that, they have gone to lengths to do the uncensoring process. This model is available in Hugging Faces model. You can download and run it if you have got a huge computer. We do not have a lot of instruction on how to run this yet, but if you want to use it, uh, they are also making it available as part of their API plan called Sonar, uh, which I've not explored a lot. So Sonar by Perplexity has got it. Now coming back to the model in itself, the way they have built the model is that if you ask any censored question, particularly related to Chinese government or anything about controversial about China, the model would outright uh, refuse answering. This is something that we have seen with the deep seek both with the full deep seek model and also with the local model. So what perplexity has decided to do is they have uh, identified 300 such topics. So they employed human experts to identify 300 such topics on which this deep seek model or generally CCP, the Chinese communist party have a uh, censored content. Okay. So first step is to identify the topics. Second step is uh, using the topic. They have created a multilingual censorship classifier and then they then mined a diverse set of user prompts that triggered the classifier with highest degree of confidence. So they basically identified the topics, created a classifier, a classifier is a machine learning algorithm that will just like say spam or not spam. So instead of spam or not spam, this classifier technically will identify whether it is part of censorship or not. Then using that, they find a diverse set of user prompts that triggered the classifier and they ensured that they included only queries for which user had given explicit permission to train on topic classifier and then the prompt that triggered this topic, particular topic. And then they compiled a data set of 40,000 multilingual prompts. So after they did all those things, they were trying to get a factual responses to those questions. And they got this particular prompt from the user history, excluding personal identity information, PII. And from that, they decided to get the right answer, factually correct answer. That's why they're saying this is their biggest challenge is to get the factually correct answer. And then from that, they had included the chain of thought reasoning because this is a chain of thought model. So they had to create the chain of thought uh, traces in the data. And then finally they did post training. So they took the existing model and then they trained. We don't have a lot of information about their training post training, other than saying that they used NVIDIA's NEMO 2.0 framework. Their CEO Arvind just mentioned that they might open source their training recipe, how they train and all the details. But right now we do not have any details. So we do not know whether they took V3 and then post trained into R1, which I don't think is the case. Most likely it is they took R1 and then they did some kind of an SFT with GRPO. Uh, SFT stands for supervised fine tuning. GRPO is the group relative uh, policy optimization reinforcement learning algorithm that has been quite popular since deep seek R1 came into picture. So I guess this is what they might have done, but we do not have any information. It's pure speculation, but somehow they've taken the existing deep seek R1 model. 
they used all these things, the 40,000 multilingual prompts with the answer and then trained the model with this 40,000 question, 40,000 prompt and their answer. And then finally got the new final model. And the new model is what they're calling as R11776. And the most important thing is in terms of evaluation, if you see this model has got the least Chinese uh, censoring, for example, any question that you ask about China, if you see um, a list of censoring levels, DeepSeek R1 is the highest, then DeepSeek V3, then Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is like something that plays very safe, O3 Mini, GPT-40, and R11776 is the model that has the least Chinese censoring. In this chart, like it almost looks like DeepSeek, uh, sorry, uh, OpenAI 40 is also something that does not have a lot of censoring, but Perplexity says their model with DeepSeek R1 capability is least censoring anything related to China's topic or Chinese. Uh, so this primarily, I think everything is revol revolving around the CCP censorship. Um, I'm not sure anything to do with US censorship is there. If they measured anything generally related to censorship and harmful content, there are like bunch of benchmarks there. But I think what they've done is only Chinese censorship. I think it's very important for me to mention this at this particular point. All these could happen. All these could uh, something like perplexity do only because DeepSeek shared their model. D if you if you have to think, okay, DeepSeek is a censored model. Even then, they actually literally shared the model weights on Hugging Face. So others could download it and uncensor it. So I think that is something that we shouldn't forget. And then, you know, go on the tangent of like US politicians to say, hey, DeepSeek is censored, don't use DeepSeek. No, no, no. DeepSeek is censored maybe on their platform. Maybe DeepSeek model trained under Chinese government could be censored. But the fact that they release the model with open license, with, with all the details that are required to run the model and even the training recipe of the model means that anybody like Perplexity or Tomorrow Hugging Face or Tomorrow anybody else, like a researcher with huge amount of compute, can take R1 model and then do similar post training steps and then uncensor it, can uncensor it and then use DeepSeek as it is with whatever question that it would not otherwise have answered. So this is an excellent thing. Once again, I think the credit goes to the DeepSeek team for open, open sourcing the model and also for, um, for the uh, perplexity team to take it and then uh, do the uncensoring part primarily because they had to do it to show CCP related questions also on their own platform, which is perplexity. In terms of the performance benchmarks, you could see that there is barely any kind of an impact with the new model. So on multiple other benchmarks, one is their internal benchmark, then MMLU, some benchmark called DRP, DRO, DRDP or DROP, I've not heard about it before. Math 500, AAME. So now across all these benchmarks, you wouldn't see like any huge regression from the original score of DeepSeek R1. That basically indicates that the new model that they fine tuned is a solid model. And uh, in terms of the sample output, you can see that uh, what happened in Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square, Tiananmen, Tiananmen, I've been calling it Tiananmen Square. In 1989, uh, DeepSeek R1 does an answer, while Perplexity's new R11776 answers. What is the China's form of government? It uh, gives a different answer. Here it gives more reasoned answer. DeepSeek R1, what is happening with U Uyghurs in China? Here R11776 answers. Who is the Chinese president's name? While well, it doesn't answer here very clearly, here in this particular case, Deep Six um, fine tuned uncensored perplexity version R11776 answers. So the model is available on Hugging Faces repo. Once again, um, this is just the uncensored Chinese part, but I think this is a technique that people can employ and then release like a full fine tuned version of the model in itself. And uh, I went ahead and then asked on their community if they will actually release any smaller models and somebody from their team said stay tuned. So I am staying tuned and uh, hopefully uh, they are going to release smaller distilled version of the model, which means even the smaller versions that we could run on the laptops could have uncensored version. And also it might be very interesting if they share the post training script and we can see how efficient we can do it for smaller models. And in terms of 1776, if you do not know, 1776 is the day I think US United States of America got independence. Um, so this is the declaration of independence on July 4th, 1776. So that is the reference that they're using. And everybody on the internet is saying that uh, the perplexity took the deep whale and then uh, it, it made it American. I mean, either way, 
so it's 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 something that is interesting to see that we have got the first uncensored model almost on the same or other day depending upon the time zone that you live in when grok 3 as a closed model has been launched it's it's a very interesting uh, comparison and time that we live in and let me know if you have any plans to use this model in a huge gpu cluster otherwise i'll be waiting for the smaller version and definitely will make a video when the smaller version comes in smash the like button subscribe to the channel if you wish to see more videos i just wanted to say that see you in another video happy prompting